uh, equivalent to a pin tumbler lock, which is the quick set, an electromechanical lock, um, which is the ILOC, I-L-O-Q uh, in, in, from Finland. It is a very, very, very popular lock. And I said, won a lot of awards. A biometric fingerprint lock, which has been popular in America, made by BioLock, the 333. Um, an electronic RFID based lock, which is made by Kaba InSync. Uh, actually a very clever lock and the ones we tested, very deficient. Um, consumer and a consumer electronic safe. Now, obviously, this isn't a high security safe. It's a hundred dollar safe. Um, the fact is, it's called a safe, and a lot of consumers believe that it offers a, a pretty good level of security. So, all of these locks appear secure, and none of them are. Not in our view. This year, we focused on what the problems are with representative samples. And frankly, there's hundreds of bypass tools that are out there and techniques to open lots of locks. So we're going to analyze each lock now for you, how it works, why it's deficient or defective, the bypass vulnerabilities, sp statements made by the manufacturers, and the methodology of how we opened it. So let's take the first one. Matt, you want to talk about this? Right. So this is the Quickset Smart Key Lock. It was introduced, go on to the next slide, it's introduced in 2007. Um, the cylinder does cost about two dollars to manufacture. Uh, it is a clever design leveraging sliders versus pins, so it is bump resistant, um, bump proof potentially. Um, it is very difficult to pick as you apply tension to the cylinder, um, turning to pick, you actually bind each of those sliders. So it's very difficult to pick. People pick them, um, but it is, it is very difficult. Um, there are a host of security vulnerabilities. Last year or the year before, um, a lock sport gentleman devised a tool to decode this. Um, there's a bunch of other tools on the market to bypass this lock. Um, millions and millions of these are sold and they're extremely popular. Again, if you go into Lowe's or Home Depot, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see the quick set smart key. And the reason is, is it's um, rekeyable within about 15 seconds. Yeah, it's, it's a very clever design. It's a modification of two prior designs. Quickset didn't come up with it on their own. They actually modified two previously patented locks starting in 1978. Yeah, you have to say also they have patents on, on, on that cylinder too. Yeah, yeah, you have to talk to the microphone. They do have patents on, on this design. So, but we're gonna demonstrate, and we always talk about patents don't mean security. So we're gonna stretch this again. Uh, this lock is a patented design. It means it's clever, but it doesn't mean it really is a secure design. Yeah, reprogrammability for the consumer is a very neat idea, and several manufacturers actually have come out with reprogrammable locks. Uh, the problem is there's always a trade-off. A pin tumbler lock is the most secure mechanical type of device. And when you start altering that design and using little tiny sliders, as you'll see, they're not pin tumblers and they're not as physically secure. Now, these manufacturers can tell you whatever they want, but the proof is how you open them in 30 seconds or less. And frankly, we did it, as we'll show you, with a screwdriver, a, a small vice grip, and a piece of a key blank. Yep. But, but there's also a professional tool out there that, that can do it in a few seconds. Uh, the way that we measure uh, uh, our, our results is by time, tools, and training. Little time, few tools, little training, there is a problem. And, and I have to also comment, after Jenna Lynn of DEF CON fame in 2006 and 2007 bumped open the quick set, they flew me out to the factory to brief me on smart key before it was released to the public. And at that point, they didn't even know what lock bumping was. They had read about it on the internet and said, we never even heard of it before. So smart key, frankly, wasn't designed to frustrate bumping. It does. It's, it's frankly, in my view, a, it is essentially a bump-proof lock. But it's got lots of other problems, including maintenance problems. So they're advertising ANSI grade one deadbolt for the ultimate in security. Secure this, your home in seconds with smart key. Yeah, this is from the packaging. This is where you can read if you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store. This is what you're going to read from the packaging. This is what you buy. This is what physically you see in the packaging. 
and you compare one log to the other one, this is what you see. So we, one of the things we'd like you to answer when we're done with this is if you know now, if you knew now before you bought the lock that these locks could be opened in this way, would you buy them? So the grade one security, we're actually filing a challenge with BHMA uh, for the quick set grade one certification based, based on two grounds. They're, they've passed the certification, but we don't think they qualify, so we're going to challenge it. And we met with BHMA a couple weeks ago. They watched the video and were not real thrilled about the issue. Uh, it's B BHMA, which is Builders Hardware Manufacturers Association. It's, it's a cooperative trade group with all the lock manufacturers. And so, uh, you know, they have a lot of standards, including the real high security standard in the United States. We've been working with them for three years in meetings to get them to upgrade and change the language and some of the standards to fix some of this. So in the, in the case of the Quickset Smart Key, there's commercial tools available. They're easy to compromise with simple implements with rapid entry. Um, tiny sliders open relatively easily and quickly. So here's what the inside of the lock looks like. And we're going to post this online. Uh, Wired also did a long story this morning. This is basically the, the internal mechanism of the smart key. And basically the critical issue is at the bottom, which is a slider that's blown up. And these sliders, the way they reprogram the lock, there's a little gear as, I, as I've blown up in the photograph. And these sliders move vertically so that when you s insert a new key to program a different combination, the little gears mesh, mesh in a different relationship. It's a very clever design, but we don't think it's secure. We don't think it's, it's reliable. And there's a lot of problems with it that we're reading about on the internet. So here's, here's a uh, macro of the slider against one of the pins to show how the two integrate together. And again, this is the critical component in this lock. These are tiny little sliders. There's five of them. This is the security, in essence, of this lock. A sidebar meshes into the little gate on top. If the sidebar doesn't go in, obviously the lock can't open. Here's the problem. Normal slider on the left, warped slider on the right. We took this, these macro photographs after we opened the lock with the screwdriver, a three and a half inch blade screwdriver, six inch vice grip, and some torque. This is a deadbolt. Anything wrong with this picture? Well, also it's distinctive on, on the smart key. Uh, you can see the, that small uh, opening window uh, on the side of the cylinder. That's where you insert the tool for rekeying this lock. It's very easy to rekey, very fast. Uh, but you're going to see how we're bypassing this lock very easily. Okay, so here's the video. This is what we did. The, the full videos on our website and on Wired, but this is the abbreviated video. Let's reprogram the lock. So working key is the, the smart key reset tool or learning tool. Push it in. Remove one key. The other one, the lock is working. key. This key works, the old key doesn't work anymore. That's how easy you can rekey the smart key uh, cylinder. Okay. Change one key for another one. Lock the door. Now we're going to bypass the, this lock. So we're going to use a piece of blank and put it into the lock. We're having a screwdriver. with the torque with a small vise the way that the door is mounted so we just have to apply tension
and you look more. And this lock has been compromised. Now, can this plug now be returned to home position? Watch this. Store is locked. The store is still open, Unlocked, but there's locked. no evidence of entry at this point. Well, we can lock it. Hopefully. So now, there absolutely is no evidence of entry. Well, only is that the key won't work. But the key won't work because the keyway is blocked. Also included on the packaging by Quickset is a statement, all you need is a screwdriver. We don't know whether that's a disclaimer by the manufacturer that they're aware of this bypass technique or that statement relates to installation of these locks. Either way, it is essentially a very true statement. So that's, that's their packaging. So it, it's important to note, and, and I heard some of you comment, this is a destructive entry. In this scenario, leveraging the screwdriver, the blank, um, just a normal KW1 blank inserted into it, torquing it and opening and ultimately relocking the lock is destructive. There are tools on the market that allow you to remove the, uh, the insertion of that blank and actually a valid key will still work um, on that with the production tool. Well, yeah. And I think we have to notice also that you won't be able to do this with a regular pin tumbler lock. Which is, sorry? Oh yeah. They told Wired we'd have to see the video. Yeah. Now, the problem with that is customer service has told us that they're aware of the tools for several months and investigating. Yeah, the, the, How long does this take to investigate? The tool is basically a screwdriver with a blade and a T-handle so you can... Yeah, sort of, you just apply torque. We just did it with simple tools yeah, rather than a $90 so locksmith tool. That's exactly right. So again, we, we, we go to the basic, how, how much tool time and training you need to, to open this one. And back, back to the standards, the standards man, mandate um, 300 pounds of torque. Yeah, 300 foot pounds. So how many of you would buy this lock if you knew about this? We have a couple of them outside, yeah, so yeah, okay. you can buy it right now. Yeah, okay. Lock number two is the iLock, taking security to a new level, that's their quote. As I said, this is a very, very clever lock it, it really is very sophisticated. Um, basically, uh, it, it, this lock costs over $200. It's very popular not only in Finland but in Scandinavia. It's an electromechanical design, but there's no battery in either the key or the lock. How do they do this? They use the motor in the lock to generate electricity, to charge a capacitor, to, authentic to wake up the processor, to authenticate the key, and then they change the function of that lock back to a motor to spin a little gear in order to the tip of the key to unlock the lock. It's very, very clever. It's also really flawed. Uh, well, first of all, you're going to say, well, that, is that a lock? It really is a cylinder. This is a type of cylinder used in Europe, okay? So we're not used to see this type of cylinder here in, in, in the States. Although we are seeing more of them. Yeah. Now, uh, the way that this work is that cylinder can be attached to a hardware, okay, by two screws on the back. As, as we're mentioning, this is an electromechanical cylinder. So replacing a mechanical cylinder for this electromechanical cylinders, you have instant access control system. You don't have to run wires. Uh, you can uh, get Audi trails from this lock. So it's very fast, a very efficient, uh, efficient way to uh, get a, an, an access control system. This is, this is one of their internal diagrams. Um, as, and all the keys, you have to understand, all the mechanical keys in this system are identical. You can buy them off the shelf in Finland or wherever their dealers are. The, the difference is each key is electronically coded differently and then all the keys can be programmed into the lock. So you set the lock once. Here's the vulnerability. You can set this lock once by either modifying the key or the lock. Once you do that, there's no audit trail. And anybody can open the lock, including with a screwdriver. Here's the problem. Normal key in green, modified key about a 32nd inch of metal filed off the tip in the red circle. Once that key is modified,